Probably the reason why I cook. Really? Fish and chips is the reason why you cook? Cooked, like seafood, yeah. That's that whole thing. Really? Yeah. I think that's the first memory of me eating fish. So then I didn't, yeah, it wasn't um, Bouillabaisse in Marseille or anything like that. So I've been doing it for about 35 years and I've not increased effort in all that time. I know I could have done, I could have gone a bigger, faster boat and all that, but I deliberately chose not to. Because most, most people can't seem to get their head around about diminishing returns. You take too many fish out today, it's not enough for tomorrow. If I am being fishing sustainably, I wouldn't still be able to do exactly what I've been doing for the last 35 years. The female lobster carries its eggs for nine months, visibly on the outside of its body. So we put them back and could be carrying 20, 30,000 eggs. Like it must be amazing today, for example, where you're pulling out two thirds of your stock that have climbed into your pots, you're putting back in the sea. We're catching virtually just shellfish. And all the shellfish haven't got any swim bladders. So if you put them back, they all survive. It's not like fish if you bring them up to yes. the surface, like a diver and it's blown and it's, it's, it's had it. So if you put a shellfish back, it survives. So technically I'd say I was keeping about 10% of what I catch. Thanks a lot. The bigger the lobster, it gets to a point, I think, there's a point where it actually becomes tougher and becomes, yes. and it's not as good. Yes. The bigger ones, you really want to keep in the sea. There's a certain size. Which, which you think Which is... I think is anything between 800 grams to a kilo, okay. for me, max. I think if you go above, above kilos, you get toughness and yeah, I don't think yeah. it's got the same sort of flavour. That's one thing I know because obviously bought a lot of fish over the years is that I've never seen an undersized lobster in a kitchen, which tells you that the actual grading of lobsters is, is pretty good, you know what I mean? Well, thanks for bringing the lobsters in from Callum. Just Interesting chap, isn't he? Yeah, I like it. Loads ago. It's pretty cool, isn't it? I know you're on a search for fish and chips and you know, you wanna, you know, talking about fish and chips today, but I thought if you've come in all this way, it'd be nice to do something a little bit more of a posh of fish and chips. Okay. Like I'm gonna do like a bit of a take on scampi and chips. It's, it goes a long way. I'm going to do um, a chilli jam with it, like a chilli and red pepper jam, and then a roast garlic mayonnaise, so a bit like an aioli. So first thing we need to really do is get on with the chilli jam. Um, so I'm going to put these back in to the fridge. You want them as cold as possible. Like, and what, what I mean by that is if they're cold, they start to get drowsy and start to go to sleep, and therefore it's a much more humane way of killing them. This recipe is um, it's, you know, it's no different than most chilli jam. There's lots of different ones on the market. I use um, fresh peppers, chilies, red onion, garlic, lemongrass, a little bit of brown sugar, and then some tinned tomatoes. And then just going to sweat off all the ingredients. Yeah, I think the chilli jam works really well with lobster. Lobster's got it's a much quite it's a stronger flavour. It's all it's all to do with what obviously the lobster eats. Is what you know, he eats lots of crustaceans. He probably eats a lot of lobsters. They are cannibals, the lobsters, yeah. So things like, I think, chilli jam or things with chilli in them, things with lots of spice in them, works really well with lobster. And then I'm going to add the tomato vinegar and sugar to it. If you're in tomato season, you can use fresh tomatoes, but I'm just using the tin tomatoes because I think they're fine. And then I've got some uh, some vinegar. And then once you've got all them all that in there, you're just going to let that simmer down for about half an hour, just keeping an eye on it and stirring it every so often. But you can basically forget about that for a while and just let it bubble away. Okay, so while that's bubbling away, you're just gonna make the um, aioli, or the roasted garlic mayonnaise. A whole bulb of garlic, which I've roasted for half an hour, about 220, and start that with the egg yolks, mustard, and vinegar. I just separate the, um, the white from the yolk, just to, to the base of the mayonnaise. So I want a bit of a kick to it, so we're gonna put about, I suppose that's a teaspoon and a, and a half, two tablespoons, because I like a bit of a vinegary kick to it as well, yeah. I haven't chopped up yeah. the garlic, that'll just break down because it's already mushy, mushy well. anyway, yeah. So we're just gonna get that going. This is just generic light or light sort of sunflower oil we're using. Just don't stop whisking, that's the, that's the, that's the rule. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and all we need in there now is a little bit of salt. So you can put that to one side. 
And then the next thing we're gonna do is our, is our lobster. The most humane way is to when, you, when you have to kill a lobster to prepare it for cooking is to get them really, really, really cold. They're dosy, they're asleep, and then you just kill them. And that's the best way to do it. So you need to blanch, blanch it. And what that does, it releases, it starts to cook the protein and then basically it releases from the shell and then where you can push pick it out much easier. That's gonna take four minutes. That's gonna take three minutes. That's gonna take two minutes. I like boiling them in salty water, but the saltiness in the water has got to be as salty as the sea. Right, so these have been cooking now for four minutes. So everything's gonna be cooked evenly. Just gonna let them cool down until I can handle them and then crack them out of the shells. So, but don't let them go cold, because they'll stick to the shell. Now, once I've picked everything out, I just portion everything up so I know what I've got. take a, uh, a cocktail stick and then just dip it into the batter and actually put the cocktail stick in the fryer as well. By overcooking lobster, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be, there's no other way around it. I'd like it nice and simple, the batter. Um, so what I'm go I've got here is some cold sparkling cider. This is like a local cider to us. Um, Cause it's posh, we're going for a bit posher. Pour it in uh, and you're looking for the consistency really. So what I always do is I test the batter with a spoon, turn it over and then see what sort of coat you get on it. On it. Yeah. And I know by looking at that, that that's going to coat it nicely, but it's not going to be too it's thick. It's not going to fall off yeah, the yeah. lobster. It, so is this closer to a tempura batter? I suppose it is in a way, because tempura batter, well, the way I got taught was always half corn flour, half normal flour, and then soda water. You're not going to get a golden colour necessary for this. I'm yeah. looking for the crispness, and I'm looking for yes. the, the coating to almost like steam that fish yes. inside. So the batter's ready. Um, we're going to put the lobster in the batter to one side for a minute because the chips actually take longer than this to cook. So we're going to get the chips on and then once they're ready, we'll do that. I mean, the one thing about fish and chips, it, you know, is the chip element. You know, the chip element is super important. I think it's overlooked sometimes. There are people are looking at the fish and they're looking at the batter, maybe even the things that go with it before they're looking at the chips. But for me, a true you know, fish and chips experience is elevated by the chips. Yeah. And I know with this technique, one thing I can't achieve is that traditional chip, but what I can do is get that nice soft centre. So fryers on about 185 to 190. You know, obviously fryers in, um, in a fish and chip shop, they go higher, but then they are, they're masters at controlling their fat. Everything's ready, so we're ready to plate up now. Some of the chili jam, roast garlic, aioli. There you go, John. Posh lobster fish and chips for you. <laughs> so happy. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Right, I'm going to go check it out. Posh lobster and chips. Like, oh, have I got the best job on the planet or what? Like, I feel so blessed to have A, learned so much, but also to be cooked such an amazing plate of food. But let's get into it. Mm. Most importantly, the lobster's not overcooked. It's beautifully moist and juicy, but there's a bit of like paprika in there.
just giving it some love. So good. Mm. This might be my new favorite way to do chips because it's got everything that Nathan is looking to replicate from a fish and chip shop chip. On the outside is just crunch town. You're going from this like luxurious happiness to this like, come on then, the aggro chip. It's looking for aggravation. The crispiness on the outside and the indulgent, delicious comfort of the beautifully cooked potato. Crunchy as hell. And what's so effing good about it is that you've got the comfort side of it and you've got the deliciousness, but you've also got this like, opulent next level experience. The lobster's like sweet and juicy, but firm and meaty. You've got the delicate tempura batter that, that's housed it and steamed it, so it's kept it succulent. Chef, amazing, yeah. like, like just so awesome. And it's like, well, it's good for me to know like where the ceiling is. Do you know what I mean? We're fish and chips, so cool. as usual, brother, thank you so much. Right, thanks a lot, thanks for coming. Nice one. Good to see you in Cornwall. Yeah, man. Don't be too long. I'll yeah, be back. <laughs> Defo. See you soon.